Welcome to all of you who accepted to be here present for this official ceremony. We normally recognize the minister of the host country, Mr. Pravin Goham of the Department of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Authorities is hosting us. And we recognize many ministers in the room and we thank them for being here as well. And we thank all the, the mayors, local authorities, NGOs, experts, academia, to being here. We'll have a welcome address by Councillor Pax Tau, Executive Mayor of the City of Johannesburg. On behalf of the City of Johannesburg, it is a great honor to welcome you all to the 7th AfriCity Summit. Johannesburg is a diverse and cosmopolitan city with a population of about 4.9 million people, 14% of whom are from Sub-Saharan Sub Africa. We pride ourselves as the melting pot of Africa and are indeed delighted to host this summit, which will strengthen Africa's local government through discourse and dialogue. Your Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, Local government is the indispensable vehicle through which our socio-political and development agenda is driven. In this regard, it is important to note that the year 2015 has been an important global year for local government. Ladies and gentlemen, we gather here under the theme, Shaping the Future of Africa with the People, Africa's local government's contribution to the Africa Vision 2063. African local government has an immense contribution to make in the realization of this vision as espoused in the African Charter on the values and principles of decentralization, local governance, and local development as adopted by the African Union. The Charter enjoins us to realize its 10 main objectives two of which bear direct relevance to this summit. The first of these aims to promote, protect, and act as a catalyst for decentralization, local governance, and local development in Africa. The other aims to promote and champion local self-government and local democracy as the cornerstone of decentralization in Africa. It is our collective responsibility as organized local government to mobilize all national governments on the African continent to ratify this charter. This will serve as a basis for a strong and capable sphere of local government in Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, once more on behalf of the citizens of Johannesburg, may I extend our best wishes to all of you as attendees of the 7th AfriCity Summit. May you also enjoy all that makes Joburg a vibrant, world-class African city. Thank you very much. On behalf of the South African local government family, represented by SALGA, and the collective leadership of the Southern African Regional Organization of UCLGA, we deem it a great honor and privilege to share this platform with you. We believe that AfriCity 7 presents a timely moment to address some of the more fundamental challenges of our organization and to bring greater unity and substance to the African voice of local government, so as to ensure that we become serious partners in the development cooperation agenda. Thank you. Thank you. In which societies and cities do we want to live in? How do we create, at city level, the condition to ensure safer, healthier, more sustainable, more resilient, and more 
and inclusive life for all our citizens. These issues are at the heart of, the of this forum of Africities who seem is shaping the future of Africa with the people, the contribution of African local authorities to Agenda 2063 of the African Union. So from Johannesburg, I am glad to convey all local elected from Africa to come to Paris because cities, African, non-African, are always united to face climate change and all the big challenges of the upcoming world. Thank you very much. This, this summit, organized by the United States and local governments of Africa, in collaboration with the host government and cities, have become, has become a popular and important event in the calendar of local governments in Africa. Before I go further, I wish to express our deep appreciation and warm congratulations to the UCLGA, the city of Johannesburg, and the government of the Republic of South Africa for the warm hospitality accorded to us and the unprecedented organization of the summit. You have indeed done Africa a great pride. We adopted what we call our Agenda 2063. It represents a commitment to collective action to meet the goals of a stable and prosperous Africa. Our Agenda 2063, which is our collective vision, puts emphasis on a people-centered structural transformation of Africa, supported by industrialization, infrastructure, agriculture, trade, regional integration, and a lot more. In doing so, due consideration is also given to the nexus between urbanization, industrialization, migration, security, and economic development. And these need to be tackled together. This is a challenge for our macroeconomists, development thinkers, urban planners, politicians, and other actors who must work in collaboration to make it a reality. Needless to say, all these efforts would require the effort and support of policymakers and politicians under the leadership of our heads of state and government in order to create an enabling environment for sustainable urbanization and human settlements development to take place. It requires the adoption of integrated national urban policies, rules and regulations, the strengthening of urban governance, planning and design, and the integration of urban economies in national development. There are mayors. During the last 30 years, and now as Secretary General of UCLG, the global network of local and regional governments, I have been a privileged observer of local governments worldwide in different moments of their recent history. I have seen cities that have thrived and cities that have failed, cities that have grown and cities that have not, urbanized neighborhoods that have lost their population and population that has migrated to lands where the cities had not yet arrived. I have seen suburban neighborhoods and happiness and as slums that have become real neighborhoods within their cities. Diversity and evolution are the key aspects of local governments. I'm going to summarize those 30 years, don't be afraid, in just three short messages here today. Messages that come from observing some successful mayors all over the world, no matter if from developing or developed countries from the north or the south. Three messages that are common to all of them. The first message, empowerment. If local governments are not empowered, no way mayors can succeed. And empowerment means especially a certain agreement with national governments. Empowerment needs to have clever national governments that understand that local governments are better prepared to solve those issues, and there are many, that require local knowledge, local decision making, local action, and local accountability. Second message, leadership. Not easy to define, but easy to see. Mayors that succeed have this leadership capacity. And among the leadership capacities that I have seen again and again in many successful mayors, I would like to focus on two. First, they are fast learners. And second, they are not afraid of trial and error. 
They learn by doing, and they learn by sharing with their peers. Learning by doing means that they are daring to try solutions. Mayors that succeed are doers, with the capacity to rectify quickly if they are wrong. Third and last message, accountability. There is no successful mayor without accountability to their stakeholders, and especially to their citizens, but also to the civil society, to local entrepreneurs, and as well to partner national governments. Democracy and local elections are still the best accountability tool, but it has to be completed with other tools to make sure that both local governments and their main stakeholders are accountable. If they need to work in partnership and they need it, they need to as well to be mutually accountable. Que le développement pour être efficace devra être local et que les politiques nationales doivent être désormais conduites au plan local et par les collectivités locales et les populations. Ce contexte est aussi porteur d'espoir puisque l'Afrique a adopté son agenda 2063. Et Madame la Commissaire vient de nous le rappeler. Le premier pilier de cet agenda, c'est de conduire une urbanisation humaine, une urbanisation qui fait de la place à l'homme, aux populations, à la femme, de faire en sorte que ceux-ci puissent être désormais les vecteurs et les agents du développement de nos pays. Et c'est important. Dans le développement local, les populations ont toujours été comprises ou considérées comme des bénéficiaires de nos actions et de nos politiques. Il faut inverser la tendance. Désormais, il faut que ce soit les populations qui conçoivent, qui conduisent, qui décident et enfin pour qui bénéficient des actions dont elles sont porteuses. L'Afrique est urbaine. Aujourd'hui, on a coutume de dire que l'Afrique est la prochaine locomotive de demain. Mais ce sera quelle Afrique Est-ce l'Afrique de nos divisions Est-ce l'Afrique de nos petites querelles et de nos petits drapeaux Ou est-ce l'Afrique rassemblée, unie, consciente de son devenir, mais qui se fait confiance et qui a confiance en elle-même Il faut que nous nous fassions confiance. Il faut que nous soyons unis. Il faut que nous décidions de faire par nous pour faire pour nous. L'agenda 2063, au-delà de l'analyse, propose une posture et une attitude qu'il convient d'adopter par rapport à l'avenir. En effet, lorsque l'on est dans une situation d'incertitude, lorsque le champ des avenirs possibles est relativement large, allant des avenirs les plus souhaitables à ceux qui sont le moins souhaitables, la seule attitude qui vaille est celle que, dans certains écrits, j'ai appelée pour ma part l'afro-responsabilité. Il s'agit de partir que l'avenir de partir de l'idée que l'avenir de l'Afrique sera en partie et en grande partie fonction de ce que feront les Africains ou de ce qu'ils ne feront pas, des décisions qu'ils prendront ou qu'ils ne prendront pas. Dans une telle situation, il faut être stratège, il faut être proactif et pour cela, il faut se doter de capacités d'anticipation et se poser à tout moment la question de savoir que peut-il advenir demain. Cette attitude est d'autant plus essentielle que regarder le futur, c'est déjà une façon de participer à la construction du futur. Now comes the moment of the official opening of this seventh Africa City Summit in Johannesburg. And uh, with, it, with great honor that I call on the stage Minister in the Presidency for Planning, Monitoring, and Evaluation, Mr. Jeff Radibi. On behalf of His Excellency President Jacob Zuma, the government and the people of South Africa, I have the greatest pleasure to welcome you to our beautiful country and city of Johannesburg. I would like to start by congratulating the city of Johannesburg under the leadership of Councillor Park Stau for winning the bid to host this seventh session of the Afri Cities Summit. 
we wish to convey our own gratitude to the United States and local governments of Africa, the UCLGA, Polkal Committee, for affording our country this opportunity to host this auspicious summit. This is a very important event that brings together local governments of Africa and development partners to jointly learn and to explore innovative solutions to improve the social and economic situations of the peoples of Africa. The previous six AfriCity summits dealt with very important and pressing matters affecting development on the continent, including the financing of local government to fulfill its role effectively, building co coalitions for achievement of common objectives, and unpacking the role of local government in connecting our people, the environment, development, and democracy to achieve sustainable development amongst other objectives.